Oh, hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, my name is Dave Warner. I'm a designer on the character animator team. And oh crap, there's a lot of people out there today. Ah! Getting a little freaked out. It's okay. Just breathe. Just breathe. What's the worst that could happen? Oh god, my head's on fire. Oh no. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, let me blow it out. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, nothing can possibly go wrong after this. What the? Ah, oh, man. Uh, so. What I've been doing here uh, right at the beginning is uh, a little <coughs> live character animation. And this is what Character Animator does. Uh, my name is Dave Warner, and I'm a designer on the Character Animator team. Uh, and if you haven't heard of Character Animator before, as Carl was just saying um, previously, this is a new app that is bundled with After Effects uh, that lets you control an animated character that you're creating in a Photoshop or Illustrator file. So it's looking for a PSD or AI file that you import. And then if you name your layers a certain way or tag them a certain way, they will correspond to your movements. And you can animate a character with performance capture. Very cool technology. Um, I'm going to go through several examples of how this works and showcase some of the new features. Uh, but to start out, I have a short video that I'm going to show uh, that gives you a preview of some of the cool stuff that Preview 4 is showing. Here we go. My friends and I wanted to give you a quick look at what's new in Preview 4 of Adobe Character Animator. Okay, so in the past, the only way to get me to stop moving and talking was to name my Photoshop or Illustrator layers a certain way. So, you name a layer left eyebrow, my left eyebrow moves when your left eyebrow moves. Eh, don't get me wrong, that still works great. But now this is newfangled tagging system. You just select any layer, tag it using the pictures on the right, and boom, works like a charm. You can even switch between visual and text-based tags at any time. It's never been quicker or easier to rig a Photoshop or Illustrator file for animation. Well, sharing your creations is easier too. You can now export to Adobe Media Encoder, giving you a quick and painless way to share your creations in a wide variety of output formats. And Siphon support on Mac OS X gives you a way to do live cartoon performances. Your character animator scenes can show up in anything with Siphon support, allowing you to perform and share cartoons in real time, which opens up a number of exciting new creative possibilities. Motion Trigger is a new behavior that lets you change your character's appearance as they move around the scene. So this hummingbird has three states, moving left, at rest, and moving right. As you drag her around with a mouse or fingers on a touch-enabled device, she automatically switches between the different views. Coupled with other behaviors, like cycle layers for the wing animation and the automatic head turner, you can really extend the possibilities of what a character can do. Want parts of a puppet to connect together? Use the new staple tool to keep them firmly attached. And now you have greater flexibility over how flexible those connections are thanks to attach styles. Weld makes a strict connection, like you fused one piece into the next with a blowtorch. Hinge lets you swing and pivot around the connection point like a helicopter blade. And Free lets you completely detach limbs and do whatever the heck you want with them. Hey, you want more control over your animation? You got it. Every behavior now has an eyeball toggle, so if you want to isolate and focus on your lip sync or eye movement or whatever, you can now do it. There's also a one or two frame quick record option, so you can record a couple of frames, make a slight adjustment, record another couple of frames, and so on. There are over two dozen more interface improvements to performing, recording, editing, and sharing. And those are just a few of the highlights. There are plenty of free example characters to download and online tutorials to help you get started. So there's never been a better time to check us out. See you soon. All right, so that was a quick overview. Uh, so let's go under the hood a little bit and see how it works. Uh, so. Uh, You'll notice that any webcam will work with this. So you'll notice here's a really nightmarish picture of my face. And this is uh, doing some tracking data. And this is just running on a MacBook Pro, but any webcam or USB webcam could work. And it's analyzing where my pupils are, my mouth. It's analyzing the voice coming out of me, uh, my eyebrows, all of that. And what we're doing is translating that and then into a 2D character. And so as I move my eyebrows or my eyes, or I'm tilting my head and all of that, it's being translated and I'm performing and animating this character in real time. 
It's switching between 11 different mouse shapes on the fly, ah, e, ook, all that stuff. Uh, and it's trying to find the best one and put it out there. Now, it might not be perfect because there's a lot of noise and stuff. And uh, things are even better in post-processing because we can do some smoothing and transitions and some nice stuff like that. But it works pretty well. Um, so right now I'm in the scene panel, and this is kind of where I would perform. I have the ability to record a performance, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but then I also have the puppet panel over here. And so let's go to uh, select this character. Uh, now he's got a few things, uh, extra signs and stuff that showed up. I'll turn those off so it's a little bit easier to see uh, what's happening here. But uh, this guy was basically a Photoshop file. And I brought the layers in. And if I name things a certain way, left pupil, uh, right eyebrow, uh, ah, mouth shape, all of those, then it's going to correspond to my movements in the webcam. Now, if I didn't name everything correctly, so let's say you know I had uh, my, my right eyebrow, and I, I should have named that right eyebrow in Photoshop or Illustrator, but I didn't. That's OK, because in Preview 4, we have the new tagging system. And you see the little right eyebrow is here uh, lit up. And so if I just brought in all my layers, you know, layer 72, I want to be my right pupil, I can just click on the pupil, it lights up, and now it will move with my pupil movement. So it's never been easier to start animating and rigging a character and getting it going. Uh, luckily, this works really well with Photoshop. So if I select the dude character here and I press Command-E, it's going to open up the original Photoshop file that I started this in. And you can start with Photoshop, Illustrator. Either is going to be fine. Um, Illustrator, you can have the option of doing it, um, you know, keeping it as vector so you'll have that full fidelity as you're moving in and out. Uh, so once I open up dude, I'll show you the interoperability between Photoshop and character animator. So I'm going to make a short cosmetic change to him here. I'm going to give him a different color hairstyle. So let's see. Here we got our character. And I've got a bunch of different mouse shapes and stuff showing, but that's OK. So I think this is the hair layer, OK? So let's do a color overlay uh, for that layer. Let's make it like uh, blue or something like that. That looks good. OK. It doesn't look good, I should say, but that's all right. All right, I'm going to save this. And then when I go back to character animator, you're going to see this thing that says incorporating external edits for dude. So it's looking for that data, that PSD file, and it's seeing what changes have been made to it. OK, so you see that his uh, ha hair is blue now. And now if I go back to the scene, uh, it should say preparing dude, getting him ready, all that stuff. And now his hair is blue again, which is very nice and uh, looking good. OK, so you can move back and forth between the, you know, any of these things at any time and make small adjustments. So that's a very common workflow. I'll start a character, try some things, make a different pupil, add details, add a hat, that sort of stuff, and build up a character slowly from the ground up. Let's look at a different character here, Red Monster. And this guy was created in um, uh, Illustrator. And this guy's basically just one big head. So he's a lot of fun to move around and do kind of goofy stuff with. So. You used to call me on my cell phone, ba ba bum bum late out when I need your love. I'm a man and I'm not bling. So you can do this all day. It's fun. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you just kind of uh, play around with it. And this guy kind of has this morphy, bendy feeling to him. Um, but these are things that you can tweak within Character Animator. So if I go to the face properties over here on the right, I have full control over how kind of warpy and movie he is as he moves around. I'm just making up words. Warpy, I don't know what that means. Uh, so head scale strength is 100. And that means when I move in and out of the webcam uh, like this, his eyes and his mouth and his head are going to get bigger and smaller. Now, maybe that's a funny effect. But for this particular thing, I don't want it. So I'm going to turn that down to 10%. And now you'll notice it's a much more subtle effect. In fact, it's barely happening. And I could do the same thing with head position. I'm going to turn that to 10%. And I'm going to do head tilt to 10%. And now. Even as I'm moving around, it's a much more subtle effect of what's happening. And it's not exactly a one-to-one -one, uh, perfect you know, a mirror of what I'm doing. So you can make this, you, know, you can turn all the head tracking off and just have a static character and do it all you know, whatever way you want. That's totally fine. So we have this new behavior, actually, uh, or this new thing that we've added into the head, which is really cool, called smoothing. And uh, if I turn this all the way up, you'll see this effect. So even if I'm moving all over the place and doing this, Notice how he's kind of slowly trying to move between the different positions and smoothly go from place to place. Um, so this may be a quality of animation that you want. Um, you have total control of it. Maybe he's underwater or something like that, and he's swimming around. Uh, you can do this sort of thing. So you have all these little parameters that you tweak. So anytime I bring a new character in, I'm always playing around with the different face parameters, eye parameters, smoothing parameters, all that to get the quality of animation and the personality that I want. Work, 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 and yes, they hand up work, 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 work. He's a big Rihanna fan, a Drake fan, who knew? Uh, so all these behaviors on the side are written in Java. Um, and currently, they're only written by uh, Adobe. But eventually, we'll open them up, and anyone can make these behaviors. And that leads to a lot of really cool possibilities. So 
Uh, you know, all these things are shown over here, but there's this behavior that we wrote called the Wiggler behavior. And just by turning that on, notice how he kind of has this hand-drawn look to him. The lines, the outlines of him are moving around. I can do the same thing with the background to make the effect a little bit more dramatic. And now you've got kind of this cool hand-drawn look that immediately kind of changes the feeling of this whole scene. Uh, so you can imagine how people in the future can make uh, behaviors, uh, whoa, what happened there? God, that's what happens if you go too far off the screen. Uh, you make behaviors for like a shading system or a walk cycle or all these different things. We have a breathe behavior that lets your character kind of breathe in and out automatically, automatic blinking, a bunch of different things. Uh, so it really adds personality to your character. Um, a real a more advanced character example is this hummingbird character that we've been showing off. This character is, uh, is so this hummingbird, this was created by a, a really awesome artist. Uh, and the cool thing about this is this, this hummingbird has a lot of different things going for it. So first, I put everything in the hummingbird in this head group. So as I move my head around, I'm controlling the hummingbird's kind of movement and Z depth and all that stuff. Now, we also have a behavior called cycle layers on this, which is flipping the, the little wings back and forth. That's just three frames in a Photoshop file, and it's just cycling between them, going fast back and forth. And I can set the frequency of that. I can do whatever I want um, with that. And then it's also got the head turner. So if I do uh, this, the bird turns its head. As I turn my head, looks up, looks down. All of that stuff, automatic head turning, pretty cool. And then, uh, new for Preview 4 as well, as I drag this character around, I'm just using the touchpad on my um, MacBook uh, Pro. As I move around, notice how the character is automatically changing to a profile view as I move right and at rest, at le left, at rest. And this is with a new behavior called motion, uh, motion trigger. And so I don't have to worry about all this you know, extra animation and keyframes and stuff like that. I just kind of can do a performance where I come in like this, maybe I tilt into the flower to get some nectar, and then fly back out, and I'm good to go. And this works really well for like a you know, really fluttery character like this hummingbird, but you can imagine this being applied to a character with a walk cycle. When it moves right, do this walk animation, stop. When it moves this way, do a walk cycle, that sort of thing. And we do have this really short uh, example of a, uh, a walking character that I just did rigged up really, really quickly and rough, where this is a 12-frame animation. I've got the character. I can kind of control the head movement and have it kind of detached there. Um, and then I can drag him around and you know, do the moonwalk. Billie Jean is not my lover. Stuff like that. I really like singing, sorry. Uh, so uh, another example of that exact um, the motion trigger in the birds was our friend Seth from uh, Seattle. He's working on this uh, YouTube thing. And he's got these really awesome birds. And I love how the, uh, as it turns its head, it still looks like one continuous thing. It's, it's a nice little uh, character there. I think this guy whistles too. And then when I press the F key, he starts flying. And so uh, I can do exactly what I was just showing with the hummingbird, where he moves back and forth. And notice he kind of has that blur when I move. If I move, uh, and I can set this as any parameter, when I move uh, past a certain speed between uh, positions, there's a transition stage. And I can show you know, some sort of blur effect or way to go between those. And then I think the other bird, uh, let's fly back there. And then this other guy, I think he strums his ukulele. Uh, if I press S, and then he can fly too and do stuff. Um, so how do you do this exactly? All right, so if I go into that hummingbird again and go back to the puppet panel, this is where I was fixing the, the um, character originally, you'll notice that uh, I put everything in a head group, which means I can control it with my head. And notice the tag on the right, this big head is glowing, which means that this is head track. So even if I didn't name it head in Photoshop or Illustrator, I can still tag it here and do whatever I want with it. If I wanted this whole body to be a left pupil, I could move the whole thing with my left pupil if I wanted to. I don't know why you would do that, but that is an option you have. Um, and then next to this head, you have a little like Lego block icon right here. And that means that a behavior has been added to it. And so if I go down here to uh, my behaviors menu and go to plus, you'll see all the different behaviors that are at my disposal. So this one, I added the motion trigger behavior. And that's saying, OK, I'm looking for a group or a layer named at rest, moving left, moving right, moving up. And so I named those the correct way in here. So all these different um, folder groups have the different variations of how the bird looks. And uh, if I didn't do that, that's OK, because again, I have the tag option, and the motion triggers are down here. And so I could have tagged them any way I want to. And then for stuff like the wings, um, this also has a cycle uh, uh, behavior associated with it. And that behavior was cycle layers. And this says, OK, start immediately, go from top to bottom. This is just a folder, a group in Photoshop with three different layers, top, middle, bottom. And I'm telling it what to do and how to move through it and how fast. 
And same with the head turner. It's just looking for Photoshop file or Illustrator file points that are called these particular names, front, left quarter, left profile, that sort of thing. That's, that's the basics of how to kind of rig a character like that. Here's another character, Flacco. Um, this guy's kind of cool. He was in the, uh, 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 the video. Uh, this was, again, done by another artist, uh, really cool art style. Hey, how's it going? My name's Flacco. What's up? And uh, he can kind of move around and do all this stuff. And I noticed when I was looking at this, uh, taking a closer look, that he's got some extra mouse shapes to him. So if I move into here, um, and uh, let's zoom into him a little bit more so we can see. He has a mouse shape uh, in here that was called Pucker, which is not one of our main uh, mouse shapes. We have ah, duh, all that stuff, but Pucker is a new one to us. So I can actually keyboard trigger this to have it show up when I press a particular key. And the way I would do that is select that layer, go to trigger over here in the properties, select P. Uh, I'll do latch, so I only have to press it once. I, I do want to hide siblings because that means all the other mouths I want to hide when this mouth is showing. And so when I go back to Flacco now, hopefully if everything worked correctly, when I press P, <whistles> he does that. And when I press it again, it's done. So it's really easy to set any layer to say show, hide, play this animation, don't play this animation, buy those keyboard triggers. And we've also had some people in the office rig it up to a PlayStation or an Xbox controller. And that's a really great way to control a character and kind of do you know, the triggers for this or the eyes on the Y key or so, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's really fun to, to play around with this. Let's see, okay, so, um, and oh, by the way, in the, <laughs> in the beginning, the character that I did um, the first time, dude, that guy, um, he was doing kind of the, uh, the crazy eyes and the mouth. That was just keyboard triggers and that cycle layers. I'm just saying, okay, play this little three frame animation that makes his eyes bulge, stop, and then when I let go, uh, you know, go back to normal. Same with the mouth, and then I can combine them to do something like that, or, oh, I just ate food at the food court, Ugh, something like that, you know? So you got the ability to do that sort of stuff. No offense to the food. I mean, I, I had the hot dog today. It was great. Actually, I had the meatballs. It was good. So, uh, okay, next, going to Stanny all over the place today. Uh, okay, so this guy is a free, is a kind of tutorial. By the way, all these puppets you see are uh, free. You can download them. You can do whatever obscene things you want with them. Well, not anything, but uh, you can, you, can uh, you know, record and, and you know, Give him Donald Trump's voice or whatever if you wanted to and, and have the ability to do that. It's totally fine. Um, but uh, uh, this character, I want to be able to move his arms and drag them around. So the way I would do that is uh, currently if I'm like dragging the mouse, I can't do that. And we don't have depth sensing cameras, so I can't raise the roof and have him automatically do that yet. But uh, give us a couple years. But he is, uh, so I would go into Stan, his name's Stanny. Hey, how's it going? I'm Stanny. And I will go to the character, select him. And what I want to do is down here, there's a tool called Dragger. And I'm just going to add a draggable point to each of his hands. And now when I go back to Stanny, hopefully, as I drag him, he'll start waving. Now, his arms look like a wet noodle, like spaghetti, and he looks kind of goofy, but uh, that is a way you could do it. So to give him a little more structure, I'm going to go into his body, and I'm going to draw some sticks. Uh, so sticks is kind of a cool way to make kind of a skeletal system and tell Character Animator which points you want to be stiff and which points you don't. So let me just start dragging, uh, drawing out some uh, sticks here. There's his forearm. There's his bicep. Let's do it for the other arm uh, as well. And then I'll give him a spine to and kind of do that. And now let's take a look at how he's bending when I move him around. Okay, cool. So now he's got a little joint system. And I can put these all over the place. We've done, you know, little, put this in the arms and the legs and do a walk cycle or whatever you want. Um, there's a lot of cool possibilities of what you can do with that. Uh, let's move to a more complex character, Cassandra, um, here. And so she's pretty cool, and she's got a lot of extra things attached to her. So you'll notice her hair is kind of dangling around as I'm moving. That's because those <coughs> in the puppet panel, I added a handle at the bottom of them using one of those same tools like the draggable tool and the sticks called dangle. And that's basically saying, I want to wait. I want gravity to pull down on this area. So when you do that, you can do kind of stupid tricks with gravity, like make her hair grow longer, make the gravity strength, you know, kind of move around and uh, do something like that. So that kind of looked kind of cool. Um, or you can play around with the gravity direction, have her have zero. G hair and go all over the place. It's kind of fun to play around with that. Wind variation, wind, have it blowing in her hair. It's fun. Um, but uh, she has a bunch of animations too. So I do one, she does her worried eyebrows. Two, she does angry. Uh, three, she says, oh, I'm so bored with this NAB show. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I know everything. Uh, five, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, six, gives her glasses. 
Seven does different hand positions. So if I was having her wave, I don't want my thumb to be you know, like that. That's not how people wave. I want it to be this way. So if I press, uh, oh, whoops, this glasses. If I press seven, it's going to flip, and then I can hide it kind of in this transition as I, uh, got to keep doing the glasses. I got to stop that. Uh, and then she points, I think. I think she points this way. She gives a thumbs up. Yeah! So you can do all these kind of keyboard on-demand triggers. Uh, and again, you could do that with a joystick if you wanted to, uh, you know, an Xbox controller or something if you wanted to as well. The nice thing I can do is I can record a performance uh, with this character. So let's, uh, let's uh, go back to the beginning here. I'll kind of set a pose of how I want her to look. And I'll start doing a quick uh, little uh, recording here. Hey, I used to be a boring, static, lifeless Photoshop file. But then I turned to live thanks to Character Animator. Yeah! OK, cool. So uh, that beautiful recording shows up. And because these things on the right-hand side have those red dots, so you see dragger, face, keyboard triggers, lip sync, that means it's looking for data when I press the record button and recording that coming in. Uh, so I've got all my tracks down here. And let's say I wanted to fix a mistake. So her head, I don't like how it looks in one position. It's easy. It, it can look like you did it in all one continuous take. You just turn all these other red things off. So I'm turning face off, keyboard trigger, lip sync. And now I'm going to kind of move my head to this side, let's say. I'm going to record a very short performance. A boring, static, lifeless Photoshop file. OK. And it just recorded a short two, three seconds. And that's going to show up as an extra take in my timeline down here, OK? And it's kind of overshadowing my other take. So whatever's on top is the winner. But if I press play and play this back, it's going to look pretty jerky, right? Watch this. I used to be a boring static. Right? Her head kind of goes back and forth. We don't want that. Luckily, we have blending tools that allow you to blend one performance into the next to make it look like you got everything perfect on the first try. So if I drag these little handles on the side, I can blend one take into the next. And I have total control over how fast or you know, how, how this works. So let's see if this works any better. I used to be a boring, static, lifeless Photoshop file, but then... So it eases back and forth, and I have total control over how that works. You could do this for the arm movements, for the keyboard trigger, for the eyes, all that stuff. Build up a performance piece by piece and get it going great. Now, if I wanted a... You know, my female voice is not that great, so uh, you could bring an external file, uh, an AIF or WAV file, drag it in, and then you would go to Timeline uh, Compute Lip Sync from Scene Audio. And it's not, it doesn't look like it's illuminated probably because I don't have the, the correct thing. Oh, there we go. Compute Lip Sync from Scene Audio. And that's going to analyze that WAV or AIF file, and it's going to compute all those lip sync positions based on that. So back there, ask them to get Red Monster doing the Obama speech, and they'll show you how it's done. It's really hilarious and uh, fun to, to play around with. Um, so you totally have option to do that if you want professional voice talent, that sort of stuff. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of different export options. Uh, you could export this out as a live uh, thing. If, so if I turn the background off, this is something with now with Siphon support, which is something we've added in OS X. You now have the ability to layer this over top of other things. So in the first video when I was showing Red Monster playing with my kids or doing a talk show with a, the monster you know, getting angry over stuff, um, you could have an interaction with a live host or person and a cartoon character talking back and forth. And this leads to some really, really cool possibilities. Live cartooning, very cool stuff. Or you also have the option of doing uh, export, uh, go to Adobe Media Encoder queue we just added. So if you want to make a quick video for YouTube or Facebook or uh, whatever, you have the ability to do that, as well as a ping sequence and WAV file. And that's something that you can then bring into After Effects as a comp and be able to move it around and do whatever you want with it there, which is awesome. So the intro video that you were seeing earlier, all those little host characters that were in the corner, I recorded each of those performances individually, put them together, and uh, made the whole thing. So uh, anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's all the time I have for today. Um, again, if you have After Effects, you already have this. Go to After Effects, File, uh, Open Adobe Character Animator. Preview 4 will be coming out sometime this year. Uh, thanks a lot.